In this screencast, we're going to take a close look at how to use a horizon view diagram to understand what the local sky will look like at a particular location on Earth. And in the last video, we used this simulation to move between a view of the Earth within the celestial sphere and a horizon diagram to understand why the location of the North Star would vary depending on the location on Earth. So from this location on Earth, straight up was in this direction and the horizon for the observer is here, and when we toggle to the horizon view, we can see how the sky would look to an observer at this location. Any kind of diagram that looks like this is called a horizon diagram, and in this video, I want to use this much more detailed diagram that you see on the right to define some additional terms and also show you how you can use one of these diagrams to better understand what the sky will be doing at a particular location on Earth. So for both of these diagrams, straight up is in this direction, and that point that is directly overhead is sometimes referred to as the zenith. There's another point that would be directly below the observer's feet that's referred to as the nadir. That one does not come up as often, but I guess it's kind of a cool vocabulary word to know. The direction of the North Celestial Pole, or the point in the sky that is directly above the geographical North Pole of the Earth, is here. Of course, from the last video, you also know that the North Star is right there as well. It isn't actually precisely at the North Celestial Pole, it's about a half a degree away, but it's close enough to be a really good tool for locating the North Celestial Pole. And if you face due north and measure the angle between the horizon and the north celestial pole, that will be exactly equal to your latitude on the Earth. Now I want to take a closer look at this diagram and show you some of its other features. So you know that the Earth has a north pole and also a south pole, and the same is true for the sky. The south celestial pole is located here, and this point is located right over the geographical pole of the Earth. The Earth also has an equator that's halfway between the geographical North and South Pole, and the sky has a similar equator, it's called the celestial equator, and the celestial equator of the sky is located directly over the equator of the Earth. The disk you see in the diagram is meant to show us how the observer experiences the Earth, so the edges of that disk are the horizon. Remember that locally, we don't feel like the Earth is a big round ball. We basically feel like it's flat. And so this is showing you here what the experience of an observer on Earth at this location would be. Anything above the disk is going to be visible to the observer, and anything below the disk will be out of view. Of course, if the observer pulls out a compass, it should point toward the North Pole of the Earth, and that's going to be in the same direction, generally, as the North Celestial Pole. So North is over here. This may help you to understand why that special star near the North Celestial Pole is referred to as the North Star. If you're outside at night and you face toward the North Star, you will also be facing toward geographical North. So once north is determined, the other compass directions can be labeled as well, so here is south, east, and west. You can see that some other lines have been drawn on the celestial sphere as well, and these represent lines that stars can take over the course of 24 hours. And this is where the horizon view starts to get really helpful and interesting. It takes the Earth 24 hours to make a complete rotation. So any given star, whatever line it happens to be on, or even if it's in between lines, will go on its merry way and return to about the same spot after 24 hours. Notice there are some directional arrows on these lines as well, indicating the direction that the star paths will take. Let's take a closer look at the celestial equator and imagine what the path of a star will look like over the course of 24 hours. Let's start at the moment that the star rises from the east and the star is going to rise and eventually reach what will be the top of its trajectory. Notice that the star does not go through the zenith. It rises up and to the right, but it does reach a highest point in the sky, and after that, the star will begin to set. When it gets to this point, it's going to dip below the horizon, and its path will be out of view to this observer until it rises again in the east. Now, the entire circle should take 24 hours to complete because that's the time it takes the Earth to make one complete rotation. 
And if you look carefully at the celestial equator, you can see that exactly half of the circle is above the horizon and exactly half of the circle is below the horizon. So this means that a star that is on the celestial equator should spend 12 hours of the day above the horizon and 12 hours below the horizon. This isn't going to be true of all stars though. For example, if a star is on a path over here, less than half of the path is above the horizon. So a star over here is going to spend less than 12 hours a day above the horizon and more than 12 hours a day below the horizon. A star on this path is going to spend more than 12 hours a day above the horizon because more than half of the circle is above the horizon. And if you go close to the North Celestial Pole and look at a star, for example, on this line, what you'll see is that the entire circle is above the horizon. And that means that that star actually never dips below the horizon. Now, you won't be able to see it 24 hours a day because the sun will come out and the sky will become illuminated and there are parts of the day when you can't see any stars at all. But stars in that location are on a path so that at any point they are above the horizon. Of course, if you have stars that are above the horizon 24 hours a day, you might wonder if there are stars below the horizon 24 hours a day. And indeed, stars on this path over here would be below the horizon 24 hours a day from this location. And so what this means is that if you stayed at this location on Earth for your entire life, there would be parts of the sky that you would never have access to. I should mention that stars that stay above the horizon for 24 hours a day are called circumpolar stars, and constellations that stay above the horizon all the time are called circumpolar constellations. So I'd like to point out a couple of other things. Imagine putting yourself in the observer's location inside the celestial sphere. What do you think you would see when you were looking to the east? We've already talked a little bit about the celestial equator and the motion of stars there. And you can see that when you look to the east, you will see stars rising and moving to the right. They won't be moving straight up. Now turn yourself around. Imagine being inside that celestial sphere and looking to the west. What do you think you would see there? Well, in that direction, you're certainly going to see stars that are setting. And from our perspective, on the outside looking in, it looks like those stars are moving down and to the left. But if you're inside the celestial sphere, you would actually see those stars as setting and moving to the right as they set. If you turn around and look to the north, you're going to see the north celestial pole above the horizon. You're going to see some stars moving in circles. They're going to be going counterclockwise around that north celestial pole, but you're going to really be able to see that circular pattern around the North Celestial Pole as you look north. And finally, when you face south, you'll see some stars making arcs, but you won't be able to see the center of those arcs. That will be below the horizon because the South Celestial Pole is below the horizon for this observer. And the stars would also be going clockwise around the South Celestial Pole. So what I want to do now is to take you back to Stellarium and show all of this to you in that program. So here we are uh, back in Stellarium and I've set my location to Andover Mass where I teach and I also set the date to September 15th, 2020, the first day of classes for me this year. And it's about 8.36 p.m. at night. And what I want to show you is what happens when we look east and uh, speed up time. So remember, the stars should be rising up and to the right when we look in this direction. And there you have it. There they are. By the way, Mars and Neptune will be out and Uranus. And so there are some interesting things to look at here in Andover. I'm going to put the grid on to show you the same thing. You can see the stars are moving up and to the right. Now you kind of have a better sense of what these lines are. We saw these lines on the horizon diagram and now they're drawn on the sky for us. Now we also said that looking to the west we should see the stars moving down and to the right and so let me show you that. Here they are. By the way, you can see Jupiter and Saturn over there on the left hand side. That would be a neat thing to look at. But anyway, here we are looking in the west. We see stars moving down and to the right. So 
Let's go to the north here. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see what's going on. By the way, there's the North Star. See how it's not quite at the celestial pole? Close, but not quite there. It's 2.18 in the morning, but I'm going to keep going here. And you can see the stars are now moving clockwise around that North Celestial Pole. There are definitely some stars that we can see that are uh, up and above the horizon for 24 hours a day. You can also see things setting over here, rising over here. Uh, now we've got to turn off the atmosphere so that we can continue to see what the stars would look like. It's 6.05 a.m., so the sun is rising. Uh, anyway, that's what we have to the north. And remember, counterclockwise. The stars are moving around counterclockwise. Now let's go to the south and see what we see there. And when we go to the south and move time forward, you can see, okay, so we can see the kind of top of the circle here, but the south celestial pole is below the horizon, so we can't see the center of the action. Stars are moving clockwise around the center of that action, though. So remember, this is the view for a particular location on Earth, and I want to give you a sense of the great power of that horizon diagram. And so what I want to do now is I want to go back to the equator and show you what the sky looks like within Stellarium at the equator. Then we're going to toggle back to the horizon diagram so that you can see how the horizon diagram can give you similar information to Stellarium. So we're going to go back to Quito, which remember is near the equator. And I'm going to scroll around here and show you, to begin with, the view to the east. Now check this out. When I speed up time, you can see that the stars are rising. And I hope that you can appreciate that if you go close to the equator, what happens is the stars are rising essentially straight up. They're not going up and to the right as they were when we were at 42 degrees north latitude. Let's move around and look to the west, and you will see that the stars are setting, and they are setting more or less straight down, not to the left or the right. Remember that when we looked to the north before, we saw the stars moving counterclockwise around the north celestial pole. Here you can see that the North Celestial Pole is a little bit above the horizon. Quito isn't quite at the equator. When I run time forward more quickly, you can still see that the stars are moving counterclockwise around the North Celestial Pole. Now, although we've changed our location on Earth, we haven't changed anything about the rotation of the Earth. And so it shouldn't be too surprising that the stars would continue to appear to move in the same way around the North Celestial Pole. Let me just move over here to the South Celestial Pole. So the North Celestial Pole is just above the horizon, and the South Celestial Pole is just below the horizon in this location. And here you can see, okay, the stars are moving about that South Celestial Pole when we face south and they're moving clockwise just as they did when we were in a different latitude on Earth. Now, I mentioned in my last video that there is nothing located right at the South Celestial Pole. That would be here. There are some really cool things to look at, though, in the Southern Hemisphere. This is the Small Magellanic Cloud, and this is the Large Magellanic Cloud, and these two objects are actually dwarf galaxies that have been captured by the Milky Way galaxy, and so they're orbiting around the core of the Milky Way galaxy, and they're very cool to look at, and if you go to the Southern Hemisphere, you can see these things without even having the aid of a telescope. And there are many other beautiful things to see in the Southern sky, and one of the coolest objects that I personally have ever seen through a telescope was the Tarantula Nebula, and that is actually in the Large Magellanic Cloud, and I want to show that to you now. 
So the last thing I want to do is go back to that horizon diagram and adjust it from 42 degrees north latitude to something that would be appropriate for the equator. And then I hope you'll be able to make a connection between the horizon view and what we have been seeing here in Stellarium. So here we are back at the horizon diagram. And remember that the location of the north celestial pole tells us something about our latitude on the Earth. And this horizon diagram was set up for someone at 42 degrees north latitude. And uh, what we want to do now is alter this a bit so that it would be appropriate for teaching us something about what the sky would look like at the equator. So the way we're going to do that is to just make this picture go away. And remember, the north celestial pole is here. Now, at the equator, we know that the latitude is close to zero. So that means the North Celestial Pole should be down here near the horizon. And we can do that. We can take this whole thing and just rotate it. And this is the horizon diagram that would be appropriate for understanding what's going on at the equator. So it isn't quite as nice looking as the one I had before, but you can still imagine that if you're looking to the east, you can see that the stars in this case would be rising straight up instead of up and to the right. And if you imagine putting yourself at the center of this diagram and looking to the west, you can see that the stars would be setting and they would be going straight down. Meanwhile, if you look north, you can see that the north celestial pole would be more or less on the horizon and the stars would be making counterclockwise paths around that north celestial pole. And if you turn around and look south, you could see that the south celestial pole would be more or less on the horizon. And now the stars would be making clockwise paths around the south celestial pole. So I hope that by looking at Stellarium and looking at these horizon diagrams, you can get a sense of how the horizon diagram can help you to understand what you're seeing in Stellarium. At the same time, the horizon diagrams aren't nearly as fun as Stellarium, and so sometimes it can be helpful to use these things in combination. So if you're interested in this topic, you might try to draw your own horizon diagram for a different location on Earth. One possibility would be to try to draw a horizon diagram for the North Pole, and another would be to try to draw a horizon diagram for some location in the Southern Hemisphere. And then you can make some predictions about what directions the stars will be taking when they rise and what directions they'll be taking when they set and whether you'll see the North Celestial Pole or the South Celestial Pole or what you'll be seeing. And then you can go to Stellarium and go to those locations and check to see if you were right. The other thing I'd like to say is that so far we've been talking about how the sky evolves over the course of 24 hours, but of course the Earth is also orbiting the Sun over the course of a year, and we're going to need to talk about how that affects the sky as well. And uh, that's both interesting and more complicated, and so that's something to look forward to.